Okay, so I guess everybody's familiar with T3, the Tradisi toolbox, uh, at least I hope so. It was it started out as as um, the Hordium toolbox, and it was just a a repository for the data sets that were coming out of the Barley Coordinated Agricultural Proposal. Uh, over time, uh, you know, once Barley Cap was over, then we we moved to Tradisi Cap, and then just between Clay Burkett, who is really the database programmer, and David Waring here, who is the um, database curator, but also uh, a proficient programmer. Um, we, we, we've continued to want to make it relevant and uh, ultimately that means uh, trying to bring in data that that happens outside of grants. I mean I think it's a useful tool for making public data that you um, obtain in, in your granting activities if, if that's a, um, a mandate of the granting program. Um, and then one of the ways that, that, that I think we can make it useful is by pulling in, uh, you know, cooperative nurseries, interstate nurseries, any kind of data that uh, is shared between breeding programs. Also possibly just uh, internal data, internal to breeding programs. Um, and the, 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 what, we, what we now call T3 Classic, which was the, the version of the database that uh, had been programmed during, was initiated in the barley cap time, um, had fewer tools that, that are just directly useful for breeders in uh, running their breeding programs. Um, so uh, there's a software called BreedBase. It's developed by Lucas Mueller's lab here at Cornell or at the Boyce Thompson Institute. Um, which has been used uh, by a number of breeding programs. It's, it was initially uh, started as the sole genomics database, but then uh, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation sort of expanded for uh, mostly root and tuber crops uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. But nevertheless, it's used by a number of applied breeders. And so it has more tools that are useful for breeders. So barcode management, um, stocks, I don't know, uh, as you explore, you'll, you'll learn more about those. And um, so we decided to, to transition the class T3 classic over to T3 breed base. Um, again, with the hope that, that these, these new, that these tools that are available there for breeders will uh, be useful to you and also be useful for um, managing cooperative nurseries. Um, so then uh, last winter, uh, David did a, uh, a, bit, a little workshop for the, um, Wheaton, uh, the Wheaton Barley Scab Initiative, and that was well received. So um, this is an encore with a little more detail. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, there, we have a couple of guinea pig programs out there. Jessica Rutkowski is one of the ones who runs one. So she has her own instance of, um, of a breed based version. Uh, Mary Gutieri also has one. Um, and so Jessica is going to um, show how she's started to adopt it. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to David Waring, who's going to show uh, some practicalities of uploading a data set. Right. <clears throat> Thanks, Valerie. And it's great to see that there are so many people here. Um, so what I have is I don't have a PowerPoint presentation to show you. The goal for today is that I'm going to do sort of a live action demo of the website and how to add field trials to the database. Uh, so what I do have is I have some notes that outline um, what I'm going to be talking about and also have step-by-step -step instructions on what I'm going to be doing with the sample data set that I have. So what I did is I just put in the chat uh, a link to this page so you can follow along with these notes uh, as I go through them. And then you can also use it as a reference for when you go and try to add some of your own data if you have it. Uh, so what we have here on the top of this um, page. David, that link is not yet in the chat. I can say that. No, oh, let me see. I think he accidentally sent it to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Here we go. Let me get back to the chat. Yep, it was just to Nick. So Nick, 
Jess has the uh, notes and he can keep them to himself or I can share them to everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so you should all have the notes now and you can use that to follow along and use it as a reference um, for, for when you're going through your own data. And I should be sharing my screen now, so you should see these notes on yep. the screen as well. Okay, good. And as I go through this, I think it will be good if you have any questions to bring them up as we go along. So I think with so many people here, it would be easiest if you type your questions into the chat, and then Jean-Luc is gonna monitor that and let me know if any questions arise and we can sort of answer them as we go along. So again, in this blue box here, there are some important links that you'll wanna use. Um, so these first two sections have direct links to the different databases that, we, that you'll be using. So each crop has a separate database, and then we also have uh, separate production and sandbox instances of each one. And I'll go into the differences in those a little bit later. Uh, also down here, we have some more detailed upload instructions for adding field trials to the database. Uh, so you can refer to these if you have, you know, a specific question on how to upload a specific data type. Um, they're pretty detailed instructions there. And then this last section are links to a bulk germplasm search tool. So this is useful if you have a list of lines and you want to see if they're in the database already. You can just copy and paste your list of lines into this search tool and it'll try to find matches for those lines. That way you know if your lines are in the database or if they have to be added. And then these green sections here have some um, blank upload templates. So these are used for adding each of the data types. So these are blank Excel files for each of the data types. And then as we're going through the traits, uh, you may want to use a trait lookup table, which is used if you are familiar with the old T3 classic trait names and you want to look up uh, the different uh, breed based trait names that we use now. So this can be used as a lookup table for those, for converting those old trait names into the new trait names. Uh, so Jean-Luc already gave a pretty good background on T3, so you should all be familiar with uh, what the Trinity Toolbox is. I have outlined here some of the main goals of T3, and those were the main goals of T3 from the start, and they will continue to be our main goals as we transition to breed base. So we want to be a centralized database for small grain breeders, and we want to provide an easy way for people to upload different uh, data sets from different sources and allow you to easily combine those data sets into custom uh, combinations and allow you to download that data and provide some sort of uh, summary and analytical tools as well. So for the last I don't know, a couple of years now, uh, we've been talking about breed base. And if you're not familiar with what's happening, um, basically we've been spending the last year or so transitioning the database and the website that is used for collecting, analyzing, displaying breeding data. So originally on T3, what we refer to now is T3 Classic, but is a custom built database and website for displaying all this breeding data. So what we've been working on now is transitioning over all of this data and moving into a new backend system called BreedBase. So all existing data that we had on T3 Classic is going to be transferred to the new database. And from this point on going forward, all new data will be added just to the new database. So the old databases will no longer be receiving any new data. Uh, but the old databases will still remain accessible and you'll still be able to access the data in them and they'll exist for the foreseeable future as a data archive. So I think when I gave the talk at the SCAB forum last winter, we had uh, finished our transition for wheat and we were still working on uh, transferring all the data from oat. But at this point, we have transi uh, transitioned and transferred all of our data for all three crops. And there's still a little bit of organization work that needs to be done for barley. But at, the, at this point, um, almost all of our data from T3 Classic has been moved into these uh, breed base instances. So if you're not familiar with what breed base is, um, it's billed as a comprehensive breeding management and analysis software. So it provides a database structure for storing all of this, all of this data it also has a website for interacting with the data. So you'll 
the website that you'll use to view and access all this data is, is brought to you by Greengaze. And it also provides some analytical tools as well. And as John Luke said, it's developed by Lucas Mueller's lab at the Boyce Thompson Institute. And uh, fortunately for us, they're located right here in Ithaca at the Cornell campus. So, you know, at least when we were, were in our offices, they were right down the road. So they, you know, we've been working very closely with them and setting up our own instances of breed base. And it's also currently in use by multiple crops. So it's in use with cassava, sweet potato, banana, rice, a bunch of Solanaceae crops, as well as others. So it's really picking up a lot of steam and a lot of new crops are also adopting it as well. So we've been spending a lot of time on, you know, moving all of our data to this new system. So, you know, why are we spending all these, all this time and resources on this? Um, one of the benefits of using BreedBase is that they have more developers. So there's a core development team at ETI. There's about you know, half a dozen developers that work solely on BreedBase. Um, so we're hoping that this will allow you know, us to have more features on T3. You know, if we weren't using BreedBase, we would basically be relying on Clay and myself on adding any sort of new features or upgrades to the website. So there's a lot more developers that are able to work on, on this website and we can incorporate any changes that the BreedBase team makes into our T3 versions. Um, having a unified database provides a lot of benefits. So we can share you know, ideas on how to most efficiently store large data sets and have uh, uniform database structures that work well for other breeding programs will most likely work well for us. And there are also a number of unique features that are added to BreedBase that we most likely would not have been able to add to T3 if we, it was just um, Clay and I working on it. So there's a trial design tool, which is nice. It also provides some seedlot management and a um, whole suite of barcoding tools, which you can use to print and scan barcodes for, for different uh, germplasm and plots. So the goal of this workshop is going to be sort of hands-on. So I'm going to be giving sort of a live demonstration on how to upload field trials to the database. So I'm gonna go through the entire process of checking to see if your germplasm records are already in the database, how to add new accessions to the database, uh, how to create um, an existing field trial. So the use case that I'm gonna be working through today is you already have a field trial design you already have data for phenotype observations for that field trial, and you want to get that data into the database. So we're working on creating an existing trial and adding that to the database, as well as we'll talk about how breed-based manages traits and how it's a bit different than how we used to manage traits on T3 Classic. And then finally, adding those phenotype observations uh, to the database for those trials. And then after my talk, Jessica Rakowski is going to demonstrate how she uses BreedBase uh, for her wheat breeding program at the University of Illinois. And she's going to give sort of a timeline on how she uses BreedBase, you know, during, throughout different time points in, in her breeding program. And then our hope is this afternoon that many of you will have your own data that you'll be able to work with. And you can try uploading some of your own data to the database. So this afternoon, we'll keep the Zoom channel, uh, Zoom room open, and we'll be here to answer any questions that you have or to troubleshoot any, troubleshoot any problems that you will encounter as you try to upload your own data. So you'll have this afternoon to, to sort of play around with it um, yourself and try to get familiar with how the database works. And then tomorrow morning, we're planning on having a, a short uh, wrap up discussion so we can talk about some common problems that you may have encountered uh, this afternoon and some possible solutions for them, or we can discuss you know, different changes that we could possibly make to the website to just, uh, try to fix these problems. And then we'll also briefly introduce some analysis tools that are included with BreedBase. Uh, we won't go into too much detail with them, but we wanna to try to gauge your, your interest in them and if there is a lot of interest in some of these tools, we can have workshops um, sometime in the future that go into these tools with a little more detail. So with that, are there any questions on sort of the, the plan for the workshop at this point?
Okay. So at this point, I'm going to give sort of a, a broad overview on how submitting data to T3 works. Uh, so it's going to be fairly similar to how T, uh, T3 Classic work in that there is a sandbox database that you can upload your data to, and then that data is then submitted to the production database. So it's important to note these two differences um, in these two different types of databases that we have set up. So for each crop, there is a production. Um, Dave, yeah. there's a quick question here. Uh, are you demonstrating genotype data uploading? I think the answer to that is no. <laughs> no, so today we're just gonna be focusing on field trials and phenotype observations. Yeah. I mean, I would say that that the the power of having more data is increased greatly when 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 the lines are genotyped, right? Um, right? That allows you to connect all of the data through alleles to other data. Uh, and so we very much encourage uh, genotype data upload. Uh, and, you know, they're probably the most important button on the, on the homepage is, is the feedback button or the, uh, and, and so if you have data that you're having difficulty or that you'd like to upload, but you don't know how, go ahead and and contact us through that button. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely encourage you to get your genotype data to us. Um, so that is less of a data type that you can upload yourself. So I think that's more you have to get in touch with us and then we'll work with you on getting that data into the database. Uh, any other questions? Okay, just to reiterate the differences between the production and sandbox databases. Um, the production database contains the curated data that we look through and make sure it all looks good and we add to the database. So for you as a user, the production databases are read only. So you cannot add data directly to the, the production databases. And this should be the database that you use when you want to download data for research purposes because it's been curated by us and it has, you know, hasn't been changed or modified erroneously by other users. And then the sandbox database is a copy of the production database and we typically copy the production database to the sandbox database about once a week. And then the, the sandbox database allows you as a user to directly add data or modify data to that database. So this is the database you want to use when you want to test load data. And there are generally two ways that you can submit your phenotype data to us. Uh, the first is using the sandbox. And this is the method that we'll be using today with the workshop. So the way that this works generally is that you as the user will create the necessary upload templates. So for each data type, there is an Excel spreadsheet that you can use to add your data to that Excel spreadsheet and then upload those spreadsheets to the sandbox. So you will upload those, that data to the sandbox and then you can verify to make sure that everything looks correct in the database. And then once it all looks correct, you can submit that trial to us to be included in the production database. And I can show you how that works later. So once it's been submitted to us, we as a curator look it over and approve the submission, and then we add that trial to the production database. So this method is good if you want to upload a small number of trials, such as a, you know, a handful of trials from a single year. Or if you want to test load a data set, if you have some data and you want to see how it looks in the database, you can use this method. And it's also good for familiarizing yourself with the database. That way you can, you know, try creating these upload templates. You can upload them to the sandbox and then the sandbox can check for some errors and see if you formatted them correctly. The other method for submitting data is just to send us the upload templates directly. So you will still create all the necessary upload templates and then you send them to us directly either through email or through a submission form. We then approve the submission and then add the trial directly to the data, the production database. So this method sort of bypasses the sandbox. 
So you don't have to upload all of these trials individually to the sandbox and then submit them to us. So this method is good if you have a large number of trials that you want to submit to us, such as a large historical data set, or if you're already familiar with how the upload templates are formatted and you're pretty confident that you have them upload, um, formatted correctly, and you can just submit them directly to us and then we'll look them over and submit them directly to the production database. Uh, so as I said before, there are some detailed instructions for each crop. Uh, so if I open up the weed instructions here, it will bring you to the sandbox version of the wheat database. And there are detailed instructions that walk you through each of the data types in order that they have to be added to the database. So for example, you have to make sure that your breeding program exists in the database first. And this will tell you how to check to see if the pr breeding program exists. And if it's not listed there, how to add that breeding program to the database. And then it's the, basically the same uh, for each of these data types. So it walks you through them in order that they have to be added to the database with instructions on how to check to see if that data exists in the database and detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to add each of those data types to the database. And then these blue buttons here have the blank Excel spreadsheets for the upload templates for each of those data types. So this is another resource that you can use for step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to upload each of the data types. So the demo, demo data I'll be working with here, um, this is an excerpt of the data that I'm gonna be trying to upload to the database and we can download the complete data set here and take a look at that. So you can see there are two worksheets in this Excel workbook and each of those um, are for a specific location. So you can see we have trials at two locations, one at Ithaca and one at Geneva. And the way this is set up is we have 10 lines that are replicated three times so we have the line names here, we have the plot numbers, the positions of the plots in, with the rows and columns, the rep and block number for each of the plot. And then we have phenotype observations for these five traits here. And the same 10 lines are used in both of those locations. So that's the data I'm gonna be working with in this example. And it's important to note that in order to add any data to the database, you'll first need to have an account. So if you don't have an account yet, uh, you can go to each of the databases and click this new user button in the top right here. And this will bring up the user registration form. So you just fill this out, click the create account button, and you will get an email that has a link that will verify your email for the account. Um, that will come from a no reply at graingenes.org email address. Uh, so if you don't see that in your inbox, you might have to check your spam or junk folder. And if you don't see the email at all after a few minutes, let us know and we can manually verify your account. Um, David, I have a question here. You, you're going to demo um, uploading data from one location, right? So I'm going to show have... both two locations. Okay, okay, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so I can show the way to upload multiple trials at once. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you'll have to have an account on the sandbox in order to add data, and then also on the production database, if you want to view most of the data on the production databases, you'll need an account on that database as well. So right now, the way these are set up, each database has its own account management system. So you'll need to create an account on each database that you want to access. 